So I don't want you to have a jacuzzi experience tonight. Okay? You might like to have that while you're here, but nothing changes. I'd like you to have a pro proactive change tonight that takes place. Something that can transform your life, if you will. So think about all these things we're going to go over tonight. And there's a ton. I was studying over the weekend, like this is a lot of information you're giving them. But my, my rule of thought is I throw everything at you. Okay? Don't think you have to implement all of this right away. It's too much. It's not going to happen. It's not realistic. Pick three or four of these things that you know. Yep, that's me. Yep, that's me. And do those things and do those over the next month and then build on from that. Say yes. Makes sense. So that's what tonight's all about. And I don't want to, I'm doing all the nutrition stuff and the exercise. I'm not beating you guys up. I'm not. We're all in seasons right now. You know? I always like to say you're doing better than you think you are. We give ourselves a hard time. We're our toughest critic. Uh, we beat ourselves up. So we might be going through the season right now where you might have put on 10 or 15 pounds. It's okay. You might be going through the season right now where you haven't been to the gym in six months. It's okay. You might be in that season right now where you're eating out, you're not planning your meals, you're having all these struggles. It's just a season that you're in right now. On the flip side, you might be in a season where I'm regaining my life, I'm regaining my health, I'm taking action, and I'm going to start and continue this process. That's just the season you're in right now. So you're doing better than where you're at. Don't be so hard on yourselves. And give yourselves the empowerment to know that you can change. You can live the life and the, and the empowerment that you are given to the fullest potential as long as you have the right game plan. Because a lot of us, we go on our day-to-day -day lifestyle. We don't really know what game plan to follow. We go on YouTube. We go on Google. We might have this symptom go on. We Google it like, oh, my God, I have cancer. I'm dying next Monday. We might have this medication we're taking. It's going to cause me to grow hair in all these different places. I don't want it to happen. And we self-diagnose. And these are just not the issues that are going to affect us. What will affect you is just being complacent and not doing anything. So tonight, that's what tonight is all about. So when I go into hormone, I lost my clicker. Stand up. So here are the players. When we talk about hormones, estrogen is a big. Hey Sue. Estrogen is one of the biggest players that are out there. We're going to talk about xenoestrogens and how estrogen affects everything. The, that's your gas pedal. Progesterone is your brake pedal. Okay? What happens over time? So it's normal to decrease this over time. So last week, I had a little, I had a, a tiny birthday. I switched over from my 30s into my 40s. Don't tell anybody. Right? You keep my secret. I'll keep my secret. Right. So, so as, you get old, as you get older, it's normal for hormones to decrease over time. What isn't normal is that when progesterone goes down, it will decrease, and estrogen doesn't do the same thing. It either stays hitting the gas or neutral. All the while, it doesn't stay in, the, in alignment with progesterone. Now you now become what's called estrogen dominant, which affects so many people, males included. Testosterone, not just high testosterone, a lot of guys, low testosterone. What happens when guys get home from work, they're tired, they're fatigued, they don't want to do anything, they're laying around, there's no drive anymore, their testosterone is in the tank. It is normal. Over the age of 30, your hormones decrease by 30%. Over the age of 50, your same hormones you were doing in your 30s, you now lose, they now drop down to 50% by doing the same exact thing. Completely normal for this to happen, but over time, it's just kind of part of getting older. We also talk about your thyroid levels and cortisol levels as well. Now, when we talk about hormonal imbalances, there's three things that I just want you to take away with you tonight. The three causes, because we don't want to address effects. That's not what I do. We address the cause. Three causes your hormones imbalance. One is your diet. The number one cause is from too much sugar and not enough healthy fats. And repeat that. Too much sugar, not enough healthy fats. Number one cause with the standard American diet. Number two is what we call xenoestrogens or xenobiotics. Things that come in like here and plastic, styrofoam, commercial raised beefs and products. We're going to talk about those here in more detail in just a second. Who's had stress this week? It's Monday. 
Yes. It's your daughter. Oh, well, yes. Right? I brought my stress. <laughs> <laughs> right? Stress, big time. You can't gauge it, though. They call it a silent killer for a reason. What happens over time? You get stressed, right? We have working two, two, sometimes three jobs, managing the kids, managing the family, managing the finances, managing the cooking, managing the family reunion. Stress, 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 but you can't gauge it. It's not like you have a broken bone or a fall and you got a bruise or a contusion or a hematoma or something you can see at and you look at. You can't gauge it. So what does happen internally, our blood pressure, our resting blood pressure now starts to slowly elevate. Our resting heart rate starts to slowly elevate. Now when we eat that piece of pizza, we used to be able to metabolize, and now it sticks on us. You can still see it there two days later. Mm -hmm. And that's what happens. So that's not the third cause is the hormonal imbalances is stress. So we're looking at these three causes. You don't have a hormone issue because you don't have enough premarin premar in your body. Right? That's what they use to treat. It's one of the major drugs they use to treat this. You don't have type 2 diabetes because you don't have enough metformin in your body. You don't have heart disease because you don't have enough statins in your body, right? Those are just what we use to treat those conditions. And they save a lot of lives, but sometimes they're given too often, too soon. So those are the three causes. Now, how do you know if you have this? What are the symptoms? Say, so, okay, this is starting to make some type of sense to me. My diet stinks. I'm stressed beyond belief, okay? And I know maybe I'm getting some of these bad things I know I shouldn't be doing. I'm putting on my body or in my body. Now I'm like, check, 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 that all applies to me. Now eventually you're getting these symptoms. How can you recognize it? You're irritable all the time. Somebody's talking to you and you're just ready to snap at them for no reason. That's a big time symptom is irritability. You're anxious, okay? Kind of feel like just going to the mall or to the grocery store just puts you on edge. Group settings makes you anxious. That's another symptom. You are now becoming estrogen dominant. You can't sleep. Normally you should be able to go to sleep and you should not have to take a bunch of pills, potions, or lotions to go to bed. Okay. You can't, or you wake up in the middle of the night, and it's like the alarm goes off, it's 3 in the morning, and you're up. Okay, you now become insomnia. You're not sleeping all that well. We touched on the weight gain. You put on this 10 to 15 pounds. On average, because we have the holiday eating season coming up over the next month, two months, some of you, the Italians that are out there, it lasts for three months. <laughs> right? What happens now on average, you put on a pound and a half to two pounds over the next two to three months. So you have this weight gain that takes place, but then it doesn't come off. You do that year after year, six holiday eating seasons, you now just put on 12 pounds that quickly. That's how, that's how easy it happens. And then lastly, we look into depression issues. Our mood just changes. I'm in a bad mood. I don't want to do anything. I'm complacent. I'm lethargic. I just want to be left alone. Just leaving me leaving with my Netflix, my house of cards, and I'm good to go. Okay. And what ends up being, it's a depressive state. It, it's okay because it, it happens because it, it affects about 90% of the public are depressed at some point in their life. Go figure, we take 92% of all the antidepressants that are manufactured in the world, we take right here in this country. 92% of all of them. We only make up 5% of the world's population. So either we're really, really depressed and everybody else is living phenomenal in, in Europe and Asia, or we're not treating the cause, we're treating the effect. So these are the symptoms. Now, long term, now we start to get conditions. This estrogen dominance takes place over time. It doesn't get better. It keeps on increasing and spiking over time, over time. Now we start to get some conditions we don't want to get. And they start from various forms of cancer, from breast and uterine cancer, to blood clots and strokes. Osteoporosis is a big one, especially over your 50s. You now become osteopenia, which is a precursor to osteoporosis. You get a DEXA scan done, and the gyno says, hey, you know what? You have osteopenia. Here's Fosomax. Take this drug to help support your bone structure. And here's that drug. What they don't tell you is over five years, if you take it, the studies show you take it for longer than five years, you actually increase your risk of fracture. And that's what you're trying to avoid from doing it in the first place. Then inflammation, big time. The causes the most, if not all diseases, is an inflammatory process in the body. You think about any type of gut issues, causes from an inflammatory process. Most cancers are caused from an inflammatory process, whether it's in the breast, the brain, and it gets developed somewhere in the body. So all this inflammation takes place, and now we have long-term estrogen dominance. So it's not just us being in a bad mood, us being depressed. These are conditions that can change your life long-term and not for the better.
Now, the nuts and bolts to this are coming up. The xenoestrogens, which I want to touch on. Anybody ever heard of a xenoestrogen before? Perfect, so I love getting on your info. So a xenoestrogen, these are all these fake estrogens that we take in throughout our lifestyle. But now they're fat soluble. So what that means is when in our blood, if you have something that's fat soluble, you need it to bind to something within your blood or within your body. When it floats freely, it becomes a major, major problem. It now disrupts your endocrine system, which is your hormone system. So you have all these floating xenoestrogens in your body. How many of you have drank, drank out of a bottle of water before? Right. So the rest of the room is lying. <laughs> all of us, right? It affects all of us. How many of you have ever stored your food in here? Maybe throw this in the microwave. Simple enough. How many of you might find this? Might even be in your cabinet right now. Not judging. These are all xenoestrogens. What happens when you heat this, there's a chemical in here called dioxin, which is a plastic. You heat it, and it's little tiny particles that goes into the food or to the product that you're eating. That is a xenoestrogen. That chronic use of bottled water, eating out of plastic, drinking hot coffee out of a styrofoam foam cup, using products that have parabens and phthalates in them. These are all xenoestrogens. We do this over time, and we're chronically exposed to this over years, 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 and years. This is where it starts. What you're not going to find is typically you're not going to find something on a label saying this is going to give you PMS. They're not going to say that. There's an aluminum that's in here. It's one of, one of the what, why do deodorants like this work? Okay, it's aluminum. It clogs your pores. So you don't sweat. What happens? That aluminum, that metal, typically females when you get out of the shower, you typically shave in the shower. Most of you would imagine shave in the shower. You get out. You throw this. You have an open pathway right into the breast tissue. That's why if you have this, make sure it's not aluminum in the deodorant that you're using. Other forms of phthalates. How do you know if it has it? Here are your buzzwords. Propylene glycol is number one. The other one is called sodium lauryl sulfate. Typically, if it's going to be anything like a swab or over-the-counter shampoo, conditioner, it's going to have one of those two components in it. Okay. Propylene glycol is also found in antifreeze, which we don't want in our body, especially when we're taking it like this. So these are the products you're going to find it in. How do you know what, if what you're taking is good? There's an app you can use, and I've talked about this before in my seminars. It's called Skin Deep. It's a free app you can download. It's on Apple or Google Play Store. And you can put your products in there, or you can also go to EWG, either .com or .org, or you can download the app. It stands for Environmental Working Group, okay. and that's very similar to the Skin Deep company. I think that might even merge at this point. So Environmental Working Group, EWG or Skin Deep, you can put your products into there and you can see is it good, is it bad, is it kind of neutral. And it's a good way to test to see if you need to start replacing everything that you're taking or if what you're doing is pretty good. On the containers, it will typically say paraben or phthalate free. Other things that are going to have these xenoestrogen in there, soy, non-fermented soy. Now it has an estrogen mimicking effect. Who drinks coffee? <coughs> I do, right? We all do. Big time. All your bad oils as well. Anything, any type of your protein that is commercially raised from your wild, uh, your non-antibiotic for chicken, your farm-raised fish, as well as your non, your grain-fed uh, beef. Those are all forms of xenoestrogens. So there's a small little video I want you guys to watch. It's, it's going to help outline some of this. This is an associate of ours. Has anybody heard of Josh Axe? So he, he used to be part of the network of doctors that I'm in. But so this is a video on him. He's, he's a natural. He's a he's a chiropractor like myself. But he also has a degree in nutrition. Um, I love following his stuff. He outlines some of something I'm going to be talking to you about here. And just a short video here. Hey guys, Doctor Axe here. In this video, I'm going to talk. Hey guys, Dr. Axe here. In this video, I'm going to talk about high estrogen foods you must avoid and also estrogen rich foods that can destroy your health and really cause major hormonal issues. And there are a lot of things that people are eating today that are disrupting their hormones, causing estrogen to be high, causing progesterone to be low. And some of the side effects are for men having more feminine characteristics. And for women, increased issues like hypothyroidism, 
autoimmune disease, chronic fatigue, and even ovarian cancer are some side effects of consuming too many estrogen-rich foods. So I'm going to talk about the five estrogen-based foods and products you absolutely want to avoid, and then talk about a food here at the very end that you'll want to add into your diet to help your body detox the excess estrogen. So the first food that you want to avoid that contains way too much estrogen, or what are called xenoestrogens, is soy. We know soy products today, especially processed soy, most of it is genetically modified. And consuming soy, again, very high estrogen-based food, and whether it be soy milk, soy protein powder, or just regular soybeans, this is something you want to avoid. Now, soy started being consumed in large amounts years ago because it was so popular in Okinawa, Japan, but they consumed a different type of soy. It wasn't the genetically modified soy that we consume today. It was a type of soy called natto, which is fermented soybean. So it was loaded with probiotics, vitamin K2, didn't have the same estrogen effects. And the reason why these estrogen foods are an issue is because they're called xenoestrogens. They increase estrogen in your body or they act like estrogen, which again, increases your risk of breast cancer and cervical cancer in women and for men, major testosterone issues, impotence, and other health issues. So again, soy, number one estrogen-rich food you've got to stay away from. Number two food is too much sugar. Too many sugars and carbohydrates can increase estrogen in your body and lower progesterone. So eliminate the processed sugar. Get rid of grains in large amounts. If you're consuming large grains, switch over to doing more fruits, vegetables, or if you need to do grains, sprouted grains are a better option. But really balancing out those ratios, lowering your carb intake, increasing your intake of healthy fats will also help naturally balance out and decrease excess estrogen in your body. Now, maybe the biggest offender of excess estrogen in your diet is consuming conventional meat and dairy products. In fact, I read a study recently out of Spain and they found that your average milk today contains 20 different chemicals and medications including growth hormones like RBGH as well as estradiol and other hormone-based medications. So again, think about this. You go, you are in the grocery store, pick up a gallon of milk. That milk contains over 20 different medications and chemicals which is going to increase your estrogen. This is why in my family practice in Nashville, I had young girls coming in hitting their menstrual cycle closer to 9 and 10 years old rather than 13 and 14 because of all of these extra hormones and steroids in the milk supply. And the same goes for the meat you eat. If you are shopping on a budget and you don't have a lot of extra money to spend, if you're going to invest in your health at anywhere, make sure it's on your meat. So doing grass-fed organic meat and raw organic dairy products because if you're doing those that are not organic, we know they've got steroids and estrogen in them that's going to increase your risk of all the things we talked about from cancer to autoimmune disease to other neurological issues. And then last but not least, again, we talked about getting rid of soy, getting rid of sugar, getting rid of the conventional meat and dairy. And then the last one here is a product but stop drinking out of or eating a lot of things out of plastic containers that contain BPA. BPA stands for bisphenol A, and it's a compound in plastics that's known as an estrogen mimicker or a phyto or a xenoestrogen. So staying away from the plastic bottle, especially when they're heated. If you leave a plastic bottle of water out in the sun, go actually buy about 90 to 100 times of those plastics. Okay, so we're all, how many of us how many of us have eaten out in the past week? Right. We're guilty. It's impossible to eat non-organic. It's impossible to eat organic 24/7. Oh, I'm sorry, I might have missed it. What was the fifth one? Did they consider dairy the fourth? Yes. Fifth. Yeah. But what you can do is you can limit. You can limit it as well. So one of the things I'd like to be shared is if you're eating, if you're doing on a budget, where do you start with? Because I get asked that all the time. So my rule of thumb is I want you to eat as much as you can, as much as you can afford, non-GMO and as organic as much as you can. So I do the 80-20 rule, some of us do the 90-10 rule. But if you're doing that most of the time, you're going to be able to avoid a lot of these products that are going to be bad and toxic for us. What we're trying to do overall is we're trying to decrease the amount of exposure you're having to all these bad estrogens day in and day out. Also what we're trying to do is we're trying to keep body weight down to a minimum. 
So what we're finding out here is there's a process called aromatization. It's a big, long, fancy word. And what it means is it means fat cells, they go through a process in your body. So guys, you know, where do we put weight on? Guys, we put it on in, in our belly, typically. Females usually goes breast and butt, right? What happens over time is when you take in all this estrogen, it doesn't have anything to bind to. So instead of the testosterone taking place, you're eating all this sugar, this dairy, these products that have flour in them, you're producing more and more fat. Typically in those regions, we don't want it. We can't get rid of it. You're producing more estrogen in turn, producing more belly fat. That's going to be co cause you to have hormone issues down the road. So where we want you to get to, weight becomes an issue, so we've got to get you to exercise. If you're, having through, if you're going through issues of PMS, you need to exercise. It's a non-negotiable. What types of exercise you need to do? It's up to you. As move, any movement is good movement. But if we could be smart about it, that'd be the best type of movement to go about it. So high intensity interval training is what I train on, what I teach on. And so what that means is you're going burst, 20 seconds on, 20 seconds off. 20 seconds on, 20 seconds off. You can do it as a speed walk. So you can just walk normally at your normal pace, and then you can speed walk for 20 seconds. If you like to be on your bike, or an elliptical, 20 seconds at your normal pace, 20 seconds you're going as fast as you can, as safely as you can. If you don't like to do cardio, if you like to do weight training, if you want to do a, a bicep curl, so a basic bicep curl, and then you're doing speed curls. Okay? If you're doing a squat, same thing, a basic squat, and then you're real timing it, speed squat. Whatever your mode is, you don't need to belong to a gym, you don't have to have a $150 a month membership at a gym or at a studio. YouTube has a million different videos on there for high intensity interval training. You can do it in your house. Your house is open 24 seven. Okay? There's no excuses. You don't have to go 30 minutes there, 30 minutes back. You don't need to worry about childcare. You can just do it at the house, but you have to do it. 75% of females go through PMS symptoms at some point in their life. One of the best things to do is to get moving. Okay. You've got to, got to, got to exercise. The products now, moving into stress, before I get into some more of the, more of the foundation with the nutrition, with the stress levels, there's a chemical or hormone get, that gets released, it's called cortisol. <coughs> when you exercise and you do that high intensity interval training, cortisol goes down, which is what we want. The longer periods you exercise, the higher it goes. So you think about the marathon runners. Okay? We look at their body type. They could run five minute miles to the cows come out. They're amazing athletes. You look at their muscle mass, they don't have much of it. Okay? They, they can go all day, they're very well conditioned, very good cardiovascular health, not too much muscle mass. What happens, the longer you exercise, your growth hormone and your testosterone, which is what you need to build muscle and to balance your hormones, goes the wrong way. So cortisol continues to jack up, growth hormone and testosterone go down. On the flip side, when you exercise with the high intensity interval training, the 20 seconds on, 25 seconds on, whichever you want to go, up, down, up, down, and you're doing that for around 20 minutes, 25 minutes max, your cortisol levels plummet, your growth hormone and testosterone go up, you metabolize your food much, much faster, you burn twice as many calories, and you don't have to do it the following day. You just have, because it's every other day. Your workout, if you're on a treadmill and you do a 45 minute workout, as soon as you get off the treadmill, your workout's over. When you do high intensity interval training, your workout still works for you over the next 36 hours, which is pretty cool. So that's why the next day you wouldn't do any cardio, you just do strength training or yoga or Pilates or whatever you want to do at that point. So that's why exercise becomes so important. Now how it relates to stress, when over time now, when we have the emotional stress, the employers riding us, you're having a hard time at work, there's family stuff going on, that your teenage son is giving you a run for your money. All this stress takes place, and a lot of times we internalize it, and that allows our hormones to become unbalanced. So a couple of stress management tips are this. Number one is take a 20 minute time out. Whatever you like to do every single day. If you like to read the Bible, if you like to meditate, if you, like, if you have animals, you like to take a walk with a dog, or a walk with your spouse, or a walk with your kid. Every single day, you get it done, you take time for you. Typically what most of us do, not saying all of you, a lot of us, we put ourselves not first, but where we put ourselves? Last. I'll get to myself next week. I'm good. This week, I'm good. I'll start eating better next week. I can skip breakfast, lunch, dinner, and tomorrow's breakfast. 
I'll get to lunch the following day. We put ourselves last. And it's common because we all have huge hearts. We want to give, 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 give. But you end up giving year after year after year, and your body breaks down. You start getting sick. You're suffering because you didn't take the time to take care of yourself. And now what you are trying to avoid all those years, I don't want to be dependent. I'm scared. I do not want to, my kids, I do not want to have my kids be dependent or me having them work for me. I don't want that to happen. But what happens is the complete opposite because we didn't spend that time taking care of ourselves. So 20 minute time out. This time of season, learn to say no. The party's coming up, work functions. Can you have so-and-so over? So-and-so's in from out of town, can they come over? Yes, 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 yes. Learn to say no. It's empowering, it helps. The internal perspective. Typically the stress you're going through today, tomorrow, or Wednesday is not going to be with you next tomorrow, Tuesday, or Wednesday. Okay. Usually it just affects us that day, but yet we put a lot of emphasis on it that particular day. So the internal perspective is ask yourself, is this still going to be bothering me next week, next month, next year? And there's certain stresses, whether it's a death, death in the family, a, a diagnosis, it's a terminal diagnosis for a family member, that's going to have a heck of a lot of stress. It's unavoidable. But a lot of the times, these aren't the stresses we get from day to day, but yet we act like our world's ending tomorrow. And it causes that stress to take place. And lastly is address the stressor. I had a patient in last week, and she was having um, she was having issues at work. And she said her boss was giving her a hard time. She goes, so if I start exercising and I start eating like this way, then I'm not going to have the stress anymore. I said, no, you're still going to have it. What are, what is it? She's not addressing the stress or. So until you have that talk with that person who might make you anxious and uncomfortable, until you address that stress or, you're still going to continue to have that stress that's going to cause your hormones physiologically to become unbalanced or imbalanced. Now moving on, some other action steps I'm going to give you. There's a lot of info on these next two slides. If you're worried about whether your hormones are balanced, one of the ways you can do that, there's a couple at-home things you can do. Number one is you can take an at-home test. You can check your temperature mid-afternoon between the hours of 12 and 3 and see where you're at, 98.4 to 98.8. You can also check it in the morning. This is called your basal body temperature, and this will allow you, you want that to be between 97.8 to 98.2. By checking your temperature, this is going to allow us to see how your hormones are functioning at the peak of the day and upon rising. If they're too high or too low, it's indicative there could be an underlying hormonal issue. So this is a cheap test you can do. Another take-home action step, the, all the hand sanitizers, they have a chemical called triclosan in them. A lot of times you see they have, an employee has them on their desk. They have five tubes in their purse. They got a tube in their car. They're everywhere. They touch someone and they put this chemical on their hands and they rub it together. This chemical is a hormone disruptor. So instead of using something like a Purell, you're going to buy bottles of this. This is called Everyone. These are off Amazon. It says coconut and lemon flavor. It has essential oils in it. It has, a, and I think this one does have some alcohol in it as well. So something like this will be much, much better for you. Because a lot of us were using something small. We're using, we don't think of it all the time. We touched on gluten and soy. The iodine test, you can, we can do a urine iodine test on you as well. And you would go between, you want to be between 10 to 12 micrograms per day is the recommendations for that. So the other take home thing we could do is with an increased iodine level, we can test it as well. That can be signs that we're having a hormonal disruptive pattern taking place. Clean out the beauty products we touched on, eating organic. Filters are big at the house. You can have filters under the sink, such as a reverse osmosis system, or you can put when it's not a reverse osmosis, it's just an extra filter. Uh, there's companies like, um, it's not Aquasana, I'm thinking of the actual, it might be Aquasana, I'm thinking of. But it's like $150, you put, it's under the same filtration system, and then a shower filtration system as well. These shower heads are like 40 bucks, you have to change them every six months, but it's another way to eliminate all the chemicals you're taking through the water supply. Your laundry detergent. Companies like Myers, anybody ever heard of the Blue Warp? So it's a blue ball, it has essential oils and various other oils in it. And you, this lasts for like 40 washes or so, 40 to 60 washes. And then there's a tube that comes in it, you just change the tube out. Instead of using Tide or your over-the-counter uh, chemicals in your dryer sheets, you're replacing that with something like this. 
another tip for you. Other action steps. Alcohol is a big one. I've got to tell you, if you're having hormonal issues, you've got to quit drinking. Alcohol is a killer for this. Just two glasses of wine is all it takes a day to really just completely wreck habit or wreak havoc on your hormone system. So if you're going through PMS issues and you're not real, and you're wondering what else to do, you know I know we all like to socialize and have a good time, but you got to quit drinking for the time being. By doing just just a little bit of alcohol is all it takes to really mimic a lot of issues with the estrogen levels in the body. Cruciferous veggies like broccoli and cauliflower, broccoli and cauliflower. You can Google your body mass index, which was another action step. Your body mass index is just your weight divided by your height. It's a standard equation. It doesn't take into account muscle, but if you're too high or too low, it's another system, another area where another area of concern that be causing issues with some of the hormonal imbalances that are taking place. And last but not least, birth control pills for um, females. Birth control pills. If you've been on them recently, now if you're taking these for a certain condition. And you have to work with your with your gynecologist. But if you're taking these for just the sole purpose to uh, avoid another child, which I get because I have a kid that's not sleeping at all right now, <laughs> there's other ways to go about it. The birth control pills, long-term usage of them are very toxic for the female body. They cause when you come off of them, it causes a ton of yeast overgrowth, and when that happens, you now have a gut that is completely toxic. So if you are taking them, or if your kids are taking them, make sure they're taking a probiotic with them in conjunction, because it helps keep their gut health healthy. And once they get off them, they've got to take two to three times the amount of a normal probiotic, day in and day out, to help drop down some of this yeast overgrowth that takes place. They're very, very toxic drugs that take place. They, they serve a very good, pur good purpose. But at the end of the day, you've got to realize that there's some issues that come about when you're taking them day in and day out for years and years and years on end. What we're going to eliminate for all these, all these things I'm taking out of your diet, don't worry, I'm putting a bunch of things into it, it's coming. Mm -hmm. The four S's, so stimulants is number one, which is coffee. Okay. The second one is stress, we touched on. Subluxation is huge, which I'm going to get to here in a second. Then we're going to talk about supplementation. What are stimulants besides coffee? What else do we have out there besides caffeine? Tea. Power drinks, all those, just sodas, sodas in general. Um, anything that has a lot of sugar in it is going to produce that type of that that quick that that five hour energy, if you will, that that burst that we have. But what happens after we take coffee? What do we need? We need to take we need another cup cup three hours later because we took it. Now we now became addicted to it. Now we need that next boost, that next boost, that next boost after that. So what we're trying to eliminate are stimulants such as that, stress, and then subluxation. It's a big one in your neck. If you look on these protocols, these, the handout that you have here. So what subluxation is by definition? It's when your nervous system goes out of alignment. And you might be saying to yourself, what the heck does a spinal misalignment have to do with my hormone system? So in your neck specifically, oh, I was going to check on you today. So Katie has, we all do, in the middle of her neck, she's got a nerve that goes to her thyroid gland. Okay. So, Typically, most of us, we're working all day on a computer, or someone like Katie's age, she goes home, she's working, studying all day long, working, and then she goes home, she might be studying at night, and then she might be on the phone, or texting friends, or on the iPad, and in this position all day long. Right? What happens over time, that nerve that goes in the middle portion of the neck, that goes to the thyroid gland as well. So not only will she have headaches, but over time, that thyroid is not functioning well. The thyroid is your hormone center. Now you, have, now you become weight loss resistant, you're going to have a hard time taking weight, taking weight off or putting weight on. Your skin, hair, and nails become a mess. They chip, they break, your hair, your skin, you're breaking out, you have acne. Because the hormone center is not functioning well. So one of the protocols here, if you have an underactive thyroid, that you'll see here, the top protocol, you'll see it says correction of the cervical curve. That poor posture from that kyphotic, that rounding, that forward head posture, that puts all that stress in the middle portion of the neck, that neck, that nerve innervates that thyroid gland. You now, now have interference from your brain to your neck to your thyroid gland, and now that interference takes place, that thyroid gland is not functioning the way that it should. So you correct that curve, takes pressure. Now you have the brain that's functioning with the nerve to the thyroid gland, your thyroid gland is functioning better. 
you don't have an underactive thyroid because you don't have enough synthroid in your body or because you don't have enough level of thyroxine in your body. That's just the, what they use to treat that condition. So that's what subluxation is. What else we're trying, now in the back, for other parts of the, the back, in the middle back, so it's not just in your neck, you can have it in your thoracic spine or in your lumbar spine. So females, menstrual cycle, big time. You have a, a painful menses, you have a heavy menses. You might be skipping menses all together. The nerves in your middle, or in your lower back, they innervate your female sex organ. Pressure on there, what happens when your cycle comes? Do you get neck pain? Typically, when your cycle's coming, where, where, where do you get pain at? What part of your body? Low back. I don't get one, so I'm just going <laughs> to Low back. Thank you. It's lower back because that those nerves, that's where that goes to. There's a reason why you don't get left knee pain when your menses comes up. There's a reason why it's in your lower back because that's where the nerve starts from. There's a reason where that stems from. That's the reason behind it. And you'll also know when you have poor blood flow, then you start to have cramping and things of that nature as well. Now, I told you I was going to add some things to your diet, and here they are. What we're removing is as much sugar as possible. Okay. The, the Food and Drug Administration, they're going to say decrease. We want you just under 40 grams of sugar per day. That's a bad idea. Don't listen to them. They're late <laughs> to the party. We want you less than 25 grams of sugar per day. That's where you, you might be asking yourself, that is darn near impossible. Because you're so used to eating on the standard American diet, you're right. It is. So you work on gradually getting back to that level. But if you're, you ask yourself, are you living to eat or are you eating to live? And most of us out there, we're living to eat. And then we get sick and we suffer. We wonder why that diagnosis of high blood pressure or hypertension or PCOS came about because we didn't take all the time to take care of ourselves back the past 20 years. We were living to eat. Now, what else we're removing are all these bad fats, like Dr. Ax said. Canola oil, vegetable oil, all those bad unhealthy fats. We're replacing those with good fats. Coconut oil, it withholds high heat. It's very good. You can heat coconut oil. You can heat grass-fed ghee, which is a butter fat. You cannot heat 